Hello, I'm not Chuck. This video is the last in a series designed to help you understand battery requirements for RVs and to choose the best batteries for your particular situation. However, only lead-acid batteries are included in the choices and only house batteries are being discussed. Motorhomes must have starting batteries for their engines, but those are outside the scope of these videos. All classes of motorhomes can benefit from house batteries. Likewise, travel trailers of all sizes often have house batteries. Vans built for camping or full-time living often start without house batteries, but soon have them added. Regardless of size or configuration, all RVs have similar electrical requirements and equipment. That is because all people have similar needs and wants for the creature comforts that electricity can supply. And as the electrical equipment proliferates, RVers want more and more power storage, storage that is best provided by batteries, and most often they are lead-acid batteries. Maybe you remember from an earlier video that lead-acid batteries come in three different intended uses and three different technologies, and not all of them are suited for use as a house battery. SLI batteries are designed and built to supply large surges of power to start vehicle engines. They are quickly damaged by deep discharges. True deep cycle batteries don't have a lot of surge capacity. Instead, they are designed to provide lower levels of power over longer periods of time. Dual purpose batteries are somewhere in between. Moderate surge capacity and some tolerance for deeper discharging. Like most dual-purpose designs, they are compromises and don't excel at either purpose. SLI batteries are very poor performers as RV house batteries and are never a good choice. Dual-purpose batteries can be used but require very careful use to avoid being quickly ruined. So for most RVers, true deep cycle designs are the only practical choice, and that is what this video assumes. The main purpose of this video is to look at the three primary technologies used in deep cycle lead acid battery design, and enable you to choose the one that best suits your needs and preferences. Let's briefly review lead acid battery construction. This is a cutaway drawing of a flooded lead-acid battery that I have discussed in a previous video, and so I won't cover all the details again. But there are two things I do want to point out. First is the use of a liquid electrolyte solution in each of the six cells of the battery. The second thing is that each cell has an access hole at the top of the battery that is plugged and sometimes provided with an additional cover. AGM and gel batteries are similar to lead-acid batteries in construction, but have two very important differences. The first is the difference in the electrolyte. AGM batteries have the electrolyte liquid suspended in fiberglass mats inside each cell to prevent spillage. And gel batteries have the electrolyte converted to a jelly-like consistency for the same reason. Both AGM and gel batteries have the cell access hole sealed with vented regulators to allow gases to escape while preventing spills. The net result of these changes is that AGM and gel batteries can be mounted on their sides as well as on the bottoms, while flooded batteries will spill if tipped over and must always be positioned on their bottoms. Each of the three types of lead-acid batteries has some advantages and some disadvantages, which make it a little complicated to decide which one is best for your particular situation. So I have created a chart with 18 characteristics that I think are important to consider and compare among the three technologies. Please remember that a lot of this is subjective, and while I have done a lot of research, not all of the sources are in complete agreement. In fact, there is a lot of difference of opinion on some of the criteria. This means that if you have done your own research, you may have reached different conclusions, which is absolutely fine. In fact, I encourage it. 
In the final analysis, the only opinion that really matters is yours. Okay, let's start with price. And by price, I mean the total cost to buy. There's not much controversy here. Flooded batteries are the least expensive, AGMs are next, and gels are the most expensive. Total lifetime cost takes into account price and the service you will get over the life of the batteries. Mounting orientation is self-explanatory. Just remember that flooded batteries must be mounted on their bottoms. The meaning of weight is also obvious. Both AGMs and gels are lighter than flooded batteries, but there isn't a large difference. Off-gassing is the tendency to give off hydrogen, which is a highly flammable gas, and water vapor while being charged. Off-gassing is minimized by proper charging techniques, but for safety's sake, batteries that are kept inside should be vented to the outside to prevent any accumulation of gas. This is especially true of flooded batteries. Serviceability refers to whether or not access is provided to each cell in the battery in order to check the specific gravity, the voltage, and the electrolyte level, and to add distilled water as required. One of the main causes of lead-acid battery failure is overcharging and should be avoided. Flooded batteries cannot be recharged as quickly as AGMs or gels. Service life refers to how long you may expect to continue to use the battery and assumes that the battery will be used and maintained properly. Both AGMs and gels can deliver higher short bursts of power than flooded batteries. If your batteries will be kept in cold conditions, AGMs will perform better. On the other hand, if your batteries will be kept in hot conditions, AGMs will not do as well. This criterion is sometimes called power density and can be very important if space for your batteries is limited. Cycle life is the number of discharge and recharge cycles that a properly used battery can be expected to provide over time. Sulfation is the accumulation of lead sulfate crystals on battery plates and is to be avoided as much as possible. Self-discharge is the tendency for a battery to lose charge even when it is not under a load. Dry-out tendency refers to a loss of water from the electrolyte. Flooded battery cells are the worst, but because they are accessible, distilled water can be added as needed. Over-discharge is another major cause for lead-acid battery failure and is to be avoided as much as possible. All right. There are the pros and cons of flooded, AGM, and gel lead-acid batteries. What's your choice? And maybe you have made a decision. If so, good for you. So you want more of my opinions? Well, here goes. Just forget about gels. Pick AGMs if your batteries can't be placed on their bottoms and must be kept inside without venting. If you will do the small amount of regular maintenance required, buy flooded batteries. Otherwise, just get AGMs. And here's one more piece of advice from me to you. Get a data sheet for every battery that you are considering buying. Study and compare the data sheets. It's the only way to know what you're getting for your money. That's it for this video. If you liked it, or if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up. Click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. And most of all, please subscribe. Oh, and don't forget, I'm not Chuck.